this question stem here says, which one of the following of true? Most seriously weakens argument. So we are we are told that there is an argument up here. And one of these answer choices, if it's true, will weaken this argument. So with the knowledge that this is an argument here, the first thing we need to do is identify the premises and the conclusion. That way we, we understand in what space we're supposed to get into. Right, because to weaken an argument, you have to you have to get into that space between the premise and conclusion, making it so that so that even if the premises are true, we have now more reason to think the conclusion not true. That's what it means to weaken. So let's read the stimulus: a cup of raw milk, after being heated in a microwave to 50 degrees Celsius, contains half its original concentration, initial concentration of a particular enzyme, the lysozyme. Okay, whatever whatever that is, right? Whatever that is, in, it used to have 100 units of it, now it has 50 units of it. If, however, the milk reaches the temperature through exposure to conventional heat source, now what is a conventional heat source, right? Like a fire of 50 degrees Celsius, it will contain nearly all of its initial concentration enzyme of the enzyme, referential phrasing referring to the same enzyme, lysozyme, right? So, so therefore, and here's our conclusion indicator. Therefore, this is a conclusion. These are the premises. This is reading like a uh, like a like a hypothe phenomenon hypothesis type question, like a causation type question. Right? They're, they're about to give us a hypothesis that is causal in nature. Right? The phenomenon is this. They just discovered, they just described it. A cup of milk, if you put it in the microwave, and then another cup of milk, if you put it in the, uh, on the stove, cook it at 50 degrees Celsius, one of them comes out with half of its lysozyme. The other one comes out with all of its lysozyme. Why? Why is that weird? We need to explain that. We need to come up with a hypothesis, hypothesis that explains this phenomenon. Right, so what 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 is it? Well, here they're saying, well, what destroys the the enzyme is not is not heat, but microwaves which generate heat. Okay, so well, that, I guess that makes sense, right? Because you know, why? How else do you explain that it came out with ha half of its lysozyme? So the how well does this phenomenon support this hypothesis? Right, I mean, this seems like a credible hypothesis, believable at least. But I don't know. There could be other hypotheses. There could be other explanations, other causal explanations for this, for this effect, for this phenomenon. Right. So let's read the answer choices here. A says heating raw milk in a microwave oven uh, to a temperature of 100 degrees destroys nearly all the lysozyme initially present in that milk. See, A is very tempting because they said, look, the enzyme, it, what destroys the enzyme is not heat, but rather it's microwaves which generate the heat. Right. Okay. So. So this seems to A seems to say, well, but if the temperature goes up, more more of the lysozyme is destroyed. Isn't that heat then? Isn't that heat, right? Th th doesn't that weaken this argument? Doesn't that maybe it is heat? But you see, where's this heat coming from? It's still coming from the microwave, right? So so if we heat it up to 100 degrees, we still don't know whether it's heat or if it's the microwave. It could still be that because it's being exposed to more microwaves now, also, right? So it really could still be the microwave. That's destroying the enzyme. So that's why A doesn't work. A doesn't just say that it's not, or A doesn't make us think that it's it's not. Right? Answer choice A is just as consistent with it being microwaves that's destroying the uh, lysozyme. B says enzymes in raw milk that are destroyed through heating, excessive heating rather, can be replaced. These enzymes can be replaced by adding enzymes that have been extracted from other sources. Well, that's great. I mean, if you know, if you're drinking your milk and you're you're short on lysozyme for your um, you know, bodily health, then this is great for you, right? You can just extract some lysozyme and just, just you know, pour it into your milk, and you'll have lysozyme uh, reinforced milk. But I don't see how that has anything to do with our argument. C says a liquid exposed to a conventional heat source of exactly 50 degrees will reach that temperature more slowly than it would if exposed to a conventional heat source um, hotter than 50 degrees. Okay, so this is a comparative statement, right? A comparative statement more slowly what will be more slowly than what well here here we go a liquid exposed to a conventional heat source of exactly 50 degrees to to reach that temperature of 50 degrees from just say a conventional oven right you set the fire you set the fire on your stove let's say not oven stove you set the fire on your stove such as exactly 50 degrees and that's not even possible fire burns hotter than uh, you set okay fine we have to go with oven then or your hot plate let's say your hot plate you set your hot plate to exactly 50 degrees, and then you put put a pot of water on it, and the, you, you you count the amount of time it takes for that liquid to reach 50 degrees. Now, whatever that time is, you call it x. And you compare it to this other time, which is you take a pot of water, and then you put it on a hot stove again. But this time, the hot stove is 70 degrees. It's hotter than 50 degrees, 70 degrees, and you call this time y. And what they're saying is that x will be a longer time than y. X will be five minutes. Y will be three minutes. But what does that have to do with anything? He said, we're trying to compare about micro. We're trying to say that 
that this explanation, that it's not the heat, but rather the microwaves that are destroying the lysozymes, that this explanation doesn't follow. And this just this is just like talking about something totally, this is just like B, it's totally irrelevant. D says, milk that has been heated in a microwave oven does not taste noticeably different from milk that's been briefly heated by exposure to I mean, again, like, who, who cares? We don't care about the taste being different. Right? How does the taste being different tell us whether it's the heat or the microwave, or, or rather, tr- how, how does that in any way convince us that it's not the microwaves that's destroying the lysozymes? Right? I mean, do, are you presuming that you can taste the lysozymes? Right? And, and therefore, if you, if you don't taste, if it doesn't noticeably taste different to you, that what? That the lysozymes are therefore present in the same concentration? See, because that's wrong. That's that's your not accepting their premises. They're already telling you it's. We already know that it comes out with half the lysozymes. So if you can't taste it, that shows nothing. It still has half the lysozymes. You just you just can't taste lysozyme very well, right? So that's that's all D does. So it really doesn't help or help us answer this question. Help us accomplish our task of weakening this argument at all. E says heating any liquid by microwave creates small zones within it that are much hotter than the overall temperature that liquid will ultimately reach. There you go. See, E is very, very subtle, but it's the right answer choice. Heating a liquid by microwave, which is what we're doing here, creates little zones that are much hotter than the overall temperature. What is the overall temperature of, the, of this uh, milk? The overall temperature is 50. Right? So they're saying little pockets inside the milk. Right? Let's imagine this is the thing containing the milk. Right? They're saying this pocket, this pocket, this pocket, this pocket, this pocket, and this pocket. They're way above, say, 100 degrees. They're like 150 degrees, and all the all the things that are outside the circle are at like I don't know 30 degrees, and then and then it kind of mixes together, and that's how it cools, right? And, and now that gives us reason to think that perhaps it is the light was perhaps it is the heat after all, and it has nothing to do with the microwaves, right? Perhaps it's within these pockets that the lysozyme is being completely destroyed. Right, and therefore that what remains, there's no lys- purple is lysozyme free zones. They've been destroyed because it's 150 degrees Celsius in there. Right, so now we think that okay, even though despite the fact that they come out to about 50 degrees at the end of it because it it averages out, now I think now I have less reason to think that it's it's the microwave and not the heat, right? And instead, it actually is the heat. In other words, I I think now if I burn this milk to 150 degrees even on my stove top, it'll still lose its lysozymes, right? Because previously, when we assume previously when we thought the temperature was held constant. Yeah, that is a good conclusion to draw. That it's not the heat because how could it be the heat? The heat is all constant, so it's probably the microwaves. But now, now we know that even though the milk comes out to 50 degrees from a microwave, this 50 degrees is only speaking to the average temperature of the milk. And in the process, parts of the milk got heated way hotter than 100 degrees than 50 degrees. In at this point, now I can't draw this conclusion, right? At this point, it becomes highly suspect that it in fact in fact is heat, and not the microwaves. So that's how we effectively weaken an argument.